Welcome to this Toolbox Talk on air quality. Over the next few minutes, we're going to give you an introduction on why air quality is a key issue in construction sites, and most importantly, what you can do to reduce air pollution when you're working on site. Reduced air quality is a significant issue, which we need to take into account in construction. The fact is that diesel emissions from plant and machinery, and even the fine dust that is produced during construction, reduces the quality of the air we all breathe. The reason why this can be an issue is that this reduction in air quality can result in serious health issues for people, particularly if they are exposed to poor air quality for long periods of time. For example, in a recent study commissioned by the Greater London Authority, researchers from King's College estimated that nearly 9,500 people die early each year in London from long-term exposure to air pollution. Across the UK, this number is estimated to be nearer 40,000. As a result of this, regulations are getting tighter on the machines and activities which cause air pollution. But first, let's introduce you to what it actually is. The air pollution we are talking about consists of a series of gases and tiny particles of dust that can cause health problems. In construction, the most significant ones are Nitrogen dioxide, also known as NO2, is one of a group of gases called nitrogen oxides that are produced by burning of fossil fuels. There is good evidence that they are harmful to health and damage the lungs, causing respiratory symptoms such as asthma and bronchitis. Diesel engines are a major source of NO2. Particulate matter, also called PM, is a complicated mixture of solid particles and liquid droplets found in the air. This is one of the most significant air quality pollutants and can be produced from the tiny particles of soot from diesel engines, as well as the dust generated by other construction activities. They are often referred to as PM10 and PM2.5, with the numbers themselves relating to the particle size. PM2.5 being smaller particles than PM10. To give you an idea of what this means, PM10 and PM2.5 particles are 10 and 2.5 microns in diameter, whereas a human hair is normally between 50 to 70 microns. That means that these particles are often invisible to the human eye. These ultra-fine particles can travel deep into the lungs and have serious health impacts. In fact, PM2.5 emissions are so small that they can pass straight through the lung wall and directly into your blood, which could cause heart attacks. Particulate matter has been directly linked to a range of cancers and are the focus of new government and European policy to improve air quality. Carbon monoxide, or CO for short, is a gas that is produced when hydrocarbon fuels are burnt inefficiently and incompletely. In high enough concentrations, CO can cause dizziness, vomiting or even death. Exposure to lower levels over a long period of time has been linked to heart disease. To avoid this, modern engines are fitted with diesel oxide catalysts, DOCs, which remove carbon monoxide and other pollutants from exhaust gases. Carbon monoxide can be produced by other hydrocarbon carbon burning equipment, such as site gas and paraffin heaters, particularly if they've been set up incorrectly. So always make sure you have a carbon monoxide alarm if you're using temporary heaters in an enclosed space. You've probably spotted a theme running through the pollutants we've talked about. One of the biggest culprits of poor air quality is plant and machines running on diesel fuel, and that construction is a significant source of some of the major air pollutants. For example, the Greater London Authority have calculated that construction sites are responsible for 8% of PM10 and 14.5% of PM2.5 directly emitted into the air in London. As we've mentioned before, particulate matter includes the tiny particles of soot, particularly from diesel engines, which have been linked with cancer and heart attacks. The key thing to remember with the pollutants we have just discussed is that, with the notable exception of carbon monoxide buildup in confined spaces, the health impacts we are talking about do not happen straight away. Instead, health problems occur due to repeated exposure over a long period of time, such as working on a construction site for a significant amount of time. And this is the reason why we need to think seriously about air quality in construction. It's a little sobering to think that workers in the construction sector have the highest occurrence of cancer. Although many of these cancers are due to asbestos, a 2005 HSE report found that each year more than 200 construction workers die from cancers associated with exposure to diesel fumes and exhaust. So what can you do to improve on-site air quality? There are quite a few things you can do to reduce pollution and improve air quality on-site. These include reducing vehicle and plant idling time, 
This may sound obvious, but how often is plant and machinery left idling on site, burning diesel and producing emissions for no benefit? In fact, many larger pieces of plant have onboard systems which allow idling statistics and load factors known as vehicle telematics. We can use telematics to understand how plant is being driven as, like cars, plant can be driven inefficiently which increases emissions. Correctly specifying equipment. One of the biggest sources of air pollution on construction sites are diesel generators. Quite often they are oversized for the amount of power required and left running on site 24-7 with little load causing significant emissions. For example, a large generator which powers works on site during the day could be left running all night just to power a couple of security lights and cameras. You can reduce emissions by more accurately specifying the generator to your power needs on site. You could even go one better and use a hybrid gas or solar generator and plan ahead so you can get early electrification at the site. You might want to think about a hierarchy when organising power when sites are set up, which prioritises using grid electricity and specifies diesel power generation as a last resort. Regular servicing. Sometimes, overlooked due to downtime and extra costs, regularly servicing equipment means it will perform better and last longer. Fuel will burn more cleanly, pollution control technologies will perform better and importantly, you will get maximum power. Choose the right fuel and oils. There are several fuels on the market that are alternatives to conventional diesel which confer reduced AQ and GHG emissions, such as gas to liquid and hydro-treated vegetable oil. Speak with your supplier to select the right oil for your plant's engine. Doing so will make it run more smoothly, reduce emissions further, result in a less frequent maintenance regime and extend the lifetime of plant overall. Report issues with machinery when you see them. It goes without saying that if you see a piece of machinery which is obviously pouring out smoke or has a mechanical problem, then stop using it straight away. Any mechanical problem with a machine could result in a significant increase in air pollution. In addition, using a damaged piece of equipment could be dangerous to you and in the long run result in more damage and cost if it is not fixed. Retrofit technologies. Retrofit technologies are increasingly available for plant and construction machinery to reduce emissions. One commonly used technology is diesel particulate filters, DPFs, which as the name implies, are filters that remove over 95% of the fine particles from exhausts. It is important that technologies such as filters are maintained properly to ensure that engine performance is not compromised. New abatement technology called Selective Catalyst Reduction, or SCR, also significantly reduces emissions of nitrogen dioxide. Invest in new plant. Manufacturers are already developing new, low emission equipment, such as full electric and hybrid plant. We're already seeing the use of new Euro 6 diesel engines in road-going vehicles, and from early 2019, the EU Stage 5 standard for non-road plant and equipment will be available. From a business point of view, your clients are likely to be specifying this on contracts already. So this concludes our toolbox talk on air quality. Hopefully you now have a better idea about what some of the main air pollutants are and most importantly what you can do to help reduce them.